I know this isn't going to be easy for parents or for principals or for students or for teachers and custodians and cafeteria workers. They're already stepping up to ensure that kids can keep learning and get fed during this crisis. Yesterday we announced temporary restrictions on entry into health care, residential care, and juvenile justice facilities. Our doctors, nurses, and frontline public employees are doing tremendous work, and we must do everything we can to help them do their jobs effectively. Additionally, today, the Michigan Department of Transportation lifted seasonal weight restrictions for trucks that are getting food and other supplies to retailers. This will, allow, this will allow drivers to make deliveries quickly and efficiently. I strongly encourage shoppers to stagger your visits to the grocery store so they have time to restock shelves. And I'll note that the Gaming Control Board is working to temporarily close casinos to further protect public health. On Friday, the U.S. House of Representatives passed important bipartisan legislation to respond to this crisis. Now Mitch McConnell needs to get the Senate back in session right away to get this bill to President Trump's desk. I hope that he signs it immediately. We are already planning to make use of the new law as soon as it is signed. This is an important first step to provide states like Michigan with badly needed relief. There is much more that we will need from the federal government, but this is an important start. That's why I'm also calling on President Trump to declare a federal disaster, which would trigger disaster unemployment assistance through FEMA for more Michigan workers. This includes the self-employed, independent contractors, and hospitality workers who are paid informally. It's time to get it done for the good of Michigan and the good of our country. There will be a need for further relief from Congress for individuals who suffer because of what we are going through. During this time, I am seeing the best in people. I've heard and seen so many great things happening by our fellow Michiganders who are looking to help, who are putting others before themselves. If you would like to help, there is a role for you. Please sign up with 211 to be on the Central Registry of People Volunteering. This could include calling elderly neighbors, delivering groceries to doorsteps, or donating extra supplies. This is not going to be easy, but we are going to get through it. We know that we have everything to live up to this challenge if we band together. With that, I would like to ask Dr. Janae Caldoun, our Chief Medical Officer, to make a few comments as well. Thank you, Governor Whitmer. Here in Michigan, yesterday, we had 33 confirmed cases of COVID-19 here in the state. As the governor mentioned, so far today, we've identified 12 additional positive tests, bringing the total number in the state to 45. We are still awaiting more test results that are running as we speak, and we will be issuing a press release later on tonight with more details. We continue to run samples at our state lab every day, and I expect there to be more and more positive cases identified. There's evidence of community spread, and our lab testing data does not give us the full picture of what is going on as far as this disease in our community. We do not need to panic, and most people who get this disease will have a mild illness. However, as a community, we do have to take this seriously. Yesterday, the Michigan Departments of Health and Human Services opened a coronavirus hotline for those who have questions about the disease and how they can get tested. The hotline number is 1-888-535-6136. It is open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day. We want to make sure everyone gets their questions answered. However, if someone is experiencing a medical emergency or they have questions about their own individual health, they should still call their own personal medical provider. As the governor mentioned, if we do not limit the slope 
and the speed with which new people are infected, there will be serious consequences. We already made the important decision to close school facilities. The governor has banned most assemblages over 250 people. Importantly, we've implemented health evaluations for any visitor or staff coming into hospitals, residential facilities, and clinics. These are important public health measures that will prevent illness and they will save lives. I've mentioned that our team at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, as well as our strong local public health leaders, have been working together to make sure testing is available to people when their doctor thinks they need a test. While initially our state laboratory could keep up with the capacity of testing in the state, we have been monitoring testing daily and expecting that to change as testing increases. Today, our state lab is able to run about 115 samples for people every day. Given the volume of testing, that result may not get back to people for 48 to 72 hours. We know that there are also private laboratories that are coming online and hospitals are starting to launch their own testing capabilities. We will need to work with our hospitals and our medical providers to prioritize testing in the state so that those who have symptoms, those who are at highest risk of coming in contact with someone who has the disease, and those who are at risk of becoming the sickest are tested. Our team will be working with our public health and hospital partners over the next couple of days to develop that testing strategy and we continue to request supplies on a daily basis from the federal government so that we can test as quickly as possible. In the meantime, these proactive community mitigation and social distancing strategies are what is necessary to keep the spread of this disease in check. The situation is rapidly evolving and we will continue to monitor the situation so we can slow the spread of the disease in Michigan as much as possible. Of that, I'll turn it back over to Governor Whitmer. Thank you, Dr. J. Appreciate it. Um, you know, before I open up for questions, I'll just say I'm also joined by Colonel Joe Gasper of the Michigan State Police. Um, you know, this is a moment in Michigan where we all have to do our part. We are up to this challenge. We will do everything we can to mitigate the um, challenges that are created as a result of these decisions, but every decision that's made is based on the best science, the best facts, and moving as quickly as we can do responsibly to mitigate the spread of this disease. And with that, I'll be happy to open it up for questions. Um, Governor, just Governor, just a question about the enforcement of the 250 people in a public space. Can you talk to us about how that will be enforced? Well, we've got a lot of partners at the state and local level who are working with us. I can tell you that uh, most venues that are able, capable of housing um, events like that, assemblages like that, are um, grateful for the direction from the state. We have worked very closely to ensure that uh, we're moving swiftly and doing everything uh, we can to protect public health. Mich what we have done in Michigan um, is aggressive, but it's by no... Uh, measure unique. We are seeing this. Other states take steps like these because it is uh, the right thing to do with the kind of community spread that we're seeing. Governor, are you considering closing bars and restaurants at any point in the future? We're clearly watching uh, and communicating with my colleagues across the country. I've been on the phone with a number of my fellow governors from both sides of the aisle, and I think that it's really important that we are um, moving quickly, but also doing it with real um, robust debates who are making informed decisions. I would anticipate that you'll learn more about what our next steps are on that front in the very near future. But like everyone, I saw pictures of um, people cramming into facilities, not observing the social distancing that we know is critical to public health. And I found those um, incredibly disturbing as well. And Certainly at the local level, there are some decisions being made, but I think um, you'll see some at the state level in short order. Can you tell us anything about the additional 12 cases discovered today? I'll hand that over to Dr. Keldon. 
So this is moving very quickly. I don't want to give inaccurate information. Uh, we will be sending out a press release later on today with more information on those cases. Are any of them currently in the hospital? Again, it's moving very, very quickly, and so I don't want to give inaccurate information. Um, what about weddings? Are we putting restrictions on weddings? Should people postpone? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? Should people postpone their weddings that are going on soon? You know, uh, when we make the order with regard to 250 people assemblages, it's driven by the best practices and the, the science and the best facts as we know them. I think uh, if you have done any research on this, we know that flattening the curve is the goal here to make sure that we are mitigating community spread, and that's why we're encouraging people not even to do elbow bumps, as we were encouraging just five days ago. We're encouraging uh, a six-foot separation, social distancing, that we know that this is the most important thing that we can do in practice. And so um, any t type of gathering that um, is not in the spirit of those guidelines, I think, is something that should be reconsidered. I, I, um, and that's, that's my best um, advice. And I don't know, Dr. Kaldun, if you share that or you have anything to add? But yes, just the social distancing is, is really important. And we will continue to look at how we can protect Michiganders as much as possible. Is there a possibility there will be any travel restrictions in the future? Uh, you know, I know that there are a lot of debates happening in Washington, D.C. I'll be on the phone with um, Pr Vice President Pence and the, my fellow governors at some point tomorrow. We've got a call scheduled. Uh, with regard to travel restrictions, uh, you know, I think that those would have to come from the federal government. Our, my um, ability to order certain things within our state borders is, um, you know, there is a lot that I can do, but on that front, it would have to come from the federal government. Governor, you just mentioned casinos. Uh, could you explain the uniqueness of that challenge and where you hope it will wind up? It's my understanding that the Gaming Control Board is working um, diligently to uh, put, to put um, you know, a policy together and to enforce it to ensure that uh, there's a temporary closure of casinos. We know that that's where lots of, you know, masses of people congregate. There is um, a lot of uh, close contact in a casino and I think that's why it's front and center in a lot of conversations that are happening across the country. It is something that we are taking a serious look at at the state level and glad to know that the um, Gaming Control Board is being so proactive. Uh, can you update us on the availability of tests? I know that you mentioned it in, uh, in, in your remarks, but I know that that's been a big concern. When are those going to become available? Yeah, I'm going to hand that one over to Dr. Kildur. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, so we have, again, for several weeks been monitoring our ability to test. Our state lab for over two weeks now has been able to test. Uh, we are looking at expanding our capacity, again, working with our, our hospital partners. Today, we are able to run enough samples for about 115 people, but there are more than that that are being received by our facility every day. And so we do have a capacity challenge that we're working as quickly as we can to address. We will have to think differently about how we prioritize testing across our state, and I'm confident with my medical providers across the state we'll be able to do that. Um, Governor, do you have any advice for people rushing to the grocery stores, you know, not knowing what's next? Well, sure. People are um, listening to, I think, our um, advice and our the orders that I've issued, understanding that social distancing is really incredibly important and are trying to prepare. It's not time to panic. It's time to be thoughtful about how you can practice the social distancing that we're recommending and keep yourself safe and um, mitigate the level of community spread. I know that... Um, it is important to give our grocers the ability to restock, and so part of the suggestion is to stagger when you go to the grocery store. Sunday night is always a busy night to go to the grocery uh, as people are planning their weeks, but a lot of our stores are open at really unique hours, and perhaps there's a, a different time you could go so that they can get stocked back up. Um, I do think, you know, we are working with our retailers. You see that MDOT lifted their weight 
limit um, restrictions because it's really important that we're able to bring supplies in. And so on that front, I think that there are some things that individuals can do to help us uh, level out the, the need and the availability, um, and we ask that people do that. Um, Governor, the CDC released a report suggesting that three weeks might not be long enough for schools to close to contain the, the virus. Are you considering making the school closure longer? You know, we haven't even gotten to the first day of the closure, uh, so I think that it's too early to tell. Five days ago when um, we were voting in a primary, you know, it seems like about a month ago at this point, there's so much information and the um, what we are confronting has changed so rapidly, it's, it wouldn't be responsible for me to guess where we will be, but as we proceed, we will certainly keep you updated if there is a need to change or alter um, what the plan is. What is the state doing to ensure that kids get fed while school is closed? There's a, a, a wonderful, um, there's a wonderful effort made up of our everyone from our superintendent of ISDs to school district leads to our teachers, to volunteer parents, philanthropy, and um, the National Guard that has come together to put together a plan so that children who receive one or two meals because of free and reduced lunch um, are able to get the food that, that they would be missing out because school is not open. And so at the local level, there is a plan, and if um, parents or students are unaware of it, I encourage them to get in touch with their local district to find out exactly how it works. But I know that a lot of the outreach has happened already. Um, in the city of Detroit, for instance, they've got this down to a science because they do it all throughout the summer. And so this is just employing a practice that they've been able to really, um, I think, do very well. In other parts of the state, we're creating it, but we're working swiftly and in conjunction with our local education leaders. Um, so I'm, this is something that's been really important from all of the decision making is how we were going to meet that need. Michigan has about one and a half million students. About half of them are eligible for free and reduced lunch, and so that is a lot of kids who we've got to prepare for, and we've worked um, through the night for the past few days to make sure that we're ready on tomorrow when, when it's time to go. Uh, Governor, Director, what, what rubric is in place to determine uh, prioritizing in testing with the limited number of tests and the growing number of cases? So we are, I met with my team this morning. We are currently working with our local health departments and our medical providers to determine what is practical uh, as far as the testing. But, but it will be prioritizing those who are most likely to have come in contact with someone with COVID-19 and those who are most likely to get very ill if they have the disease. Again, we continue to push every day asking the feds to give us more supplies. We're expanding our staffing. Uh, we're, we're, we're working with our local partners and our hospitals. That rubric will be available in the next couple of days. Some counties are taking it upon themselves to ask businesses to limit their capacities by 50 percent. Is that something that you're looking to implement statewide? I think, um, you know, tonight I'm not making an announcement on that front, but I would anticipate that there will be further uh, information available very, very soon. I'll just have one thing before we close. Um, you know, I, I know that there is a lot of stress. I know that people are worried. And I also know that uh, people are wondering, was closing the schools the right thing to do? And it's going to create hardship, and, and I recognize that. The fact of the matter is we've had a few people test positive for uh, COVID-19 who were teaching or were um, some had some sort of a role in schools. In this group of 12 that have come back positive today, we know that there is a younger person in that group. And so it, I believe um, is evidence that closing our schools in this moment was the right thing to do. Um, it is not going to be easy. We recognize that and we're working incredibly hard to ensure that parents and educators and children have the support they need in this challenging time. With that, uh, good night everyone. We will be uh, in touch in short order with additional information. Thank you. Hey, 
。可光说有什么用呢？填好二零二零年的人口普查，就可以协助公共资金的分配，比如地方医疗，更多的政府席位。想要给自己发声啊，赶紧上网填，打电话也行。请上二零二零 census.gov 完成普查。